Hey everybody, welcome to The Social Eclectic. I am your host, Diana Collins, and I want to welcome you to today's episode. If this is the first time you're visiting us, welcome. Thank you so much for taking the time out to spend with me. I greatly appreciate it. Uh, And if this is not, and you have graced us with your time again, I want to say welcome back, welcome back, welcome back, and thank you, thank you, thank you for taking the time out to spend with me. I value your time just as much as I value mine, so I will not waste your time. Today's episode is actually a friend of mine who is an actor, screenwriter, a uh, voiceover actor. I mean, he's doing so many great things that I cannot even stress to you. He's into health and wellness, um, but I'm happy to call him friend. He is Colin Fisher. So thank you, Colin, for taking the time out to spend with us today. All right. So today I have my friend with me, Mr. Colin Fisher. And uh, hello, you know, hi, you know, it, we've <laughs> talked so much like via instant messenger and things like this so it's really cool to get to actually have a conversation with you face to face without dropping a message here and there (laughs) yeah and seriously like i i'm gonna say i know i said i was gonna say only one more time yesterday but thank you so much for your patience (laughs) like really really excited to be on and um yeah just to chat with you and to have a good time so thank you no no absolutely you know life we're artists right and Mm -hmm. we're always doing something and something always comes up that audition that interview whatever so that yeah. that ability to be flexible is mm-hmm. always something that i valued in other people that granted me so yeah. you know i always pay it forward right grant those graces Absolutely. going forward so um not a problem ever you know just let me know and we can always rearrange things so i'm happy to do that but i'm happy to finally get you here goodness yeah we're here <laughs> we're here we're here um so you know the podcast is really about you and being who you are presenting your authentic self and just you know exuding that wellness and well-being that we have within Mm -hmm. us and with the pandemic and being in the house all day for me I'm an introvert so it really doesn't bother me um I was in my happy place (laughs) when the world was like (laughs) shut down just a little bit um so it wasn't a big deal for me but I know it's a big deal for a lot of people right so Mm -hmm. um one there's going to be two parts to this so the first part is definitely share with us who you are and, you know, what it is that you do and being a, how do you present your authentic self? And then we'll go into the other part that we have to chat about. So we, we might be here a while, so yeah. I hope you have some time. <laughs> Love it. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm Colin Fisher. I'm an actor, voice actor, and screenwriter. Uh, I'm here up in Seattle. I was in Phoenix before uh, studying at Grand Canyon University. Uh, I got my degree in digital film production with an emphasis on screenwriting, but I've definitely uh, been focusing on more of the talent side, like especially now that I'm represented, uh, but going after that. Most of it, again, with like this pandemic world we're in right now. Thank you. Uh, With this uh, pandemic that we're in, you know, a lot of it has been through an adjustment to more self tapes and, you know, from home recording. Like, thankfully, I'm actually going to be able to, I have a voiceover audition tomorrow. So I'm going to be, or not audition. I have a, uh, I landed a voiceover gig, okay, so I'm going to be like, going to the it. studio tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> landed an audition, no. Uh, yeah, so I'm going over into studio space tomorrow, which I'm really excited. That's my first time actually being able to do that. Um, but, you know, it like you said, flexibility and being able to adjust. So, you know, you get the, the home set up, you do everything from here. But I'm, I'm really excited to be amongst creatives and among people again. So I'm really excited for that. And how do I show up? Um, so I have... You know, I think when we're talking about authenticity, you know, I have, mm-hmm. I place big value on, you know, physical wellness. Uh, myself, uh, my day-to-day job, I'm a chiropractic assistant as well as a personal trainer. Um, and I'm an online as well as in-person coach. And so being help pe- helping people with their physical journey um, is, you know, because we're all on our own. We're not all in the same space there. And so, you know, learning to, you know, be, be confident with who you are in the moment, but, you know, always setting, you know, goals for yourself. What do you want to accomplish? Who do you want to be? Who do you want to become? I'm a, I'm a big believer in that. Nice. Um, and then from like the mental health side of thing, I feel like I've gone through a lot of growth and I don't want to call it maturity because I don't think it's maturity, <laughs> but I just a lot of growth there and evolution, like 
Oh, go ahead. Evolution, right? Evolution. Yeah. Yeah. I think, uh, I think just over the past couple of years, like understanding like the word possibility and you know, what that means for me and what I see that in other people and always, always be talking in possibility. Like, there is nothing like definite, I guess. Uh, and it's like you are there. There's always possibility. And I think the most powerful phrase is I'd like to explore the possibilities of this. I think that's such a, such a cool phrase. So, but yeah, that's a, that's a little look into who I am and, and what I'm all about. That's awesome. Well, so what does possibilities mean to you? Yeah. Possibilities. I, I don't know. It's, it opens, I think it opens conversations. Like when I, when I talk to people, I think it's really a good phrase in business. It's because when you're talking to people or like, let's say you're going for a job, you're not saying, Hey, I want this job. It's, Hey, let's explore the possibilities of collaborating or working mm-hmm. together. It's, and so when you're not really sure what it is, but you just know you want to open the door to the conversation, you just invite them. Would you like to explore the possibilities with me? And so it's, and I think that phrase is very exciting, you know, instead yeah. of being very direct, very, I don't know, very, um, I don't know, very single minded about that. It's right. like opening the door to more things. And I've had great success with that in the couple of years that I've had that kind of mentality towards that stuff. So uh, I can't say it's my own. Um, went through, if you're familiar with the Landmark Forum. Yes, uh, I actually I, signed yeah. up for Landmark Forum. Okay. I yeah, go so in. That's, I, that's I, a little I, bit into that. So that's yeah, small world. <laughs> I um a friend of mine, I, she was a coworker of mine, and she, you know, found me. Uh, fa- uh, found me. We were friends on Facebook, and she said, "Hey, you know, I think this is so you." And we talked about it, and then next thing you know, I'm signing up for Landmark Forum. My class is in December. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Well, not trying to spoil it, uh, <laughs> but I think there's, I mean, it's different for every person that goes through. I think you're going to love it because that's what it's all about. It's all about a poss- possibility. So nice. um, I'm wow, really excited that you're actually going, that's super cool. Keep me updated on that. <laughs> I will. Um, uh, but yeah, and I, you know, really learned that like also just through my parents and how, how they act and how they show up in the world. It's just, it's a really cool way to live. Um, and my mentor too, my mentor, Mark, he's also just he is a champion for possibilities. So I, I love him. He is such a rock in my life. Nice. So, yeah. Nice. So wellness and fitness, mm-hmm. all right, with everything that you have going on, how do you carve that into your life? Yeah. Um, I feel like I've really adopted the you know habits and routines that have been able to support me on this kind of career in film and acting voiceover. Um, I think morning routines are very important, uh, at least for me, because it's like the same way that you show up and you start with every day. Uh, and I think it's good. It's and not making it a a regimented type thing where like, oh, I have to do this or like mm-hmm. I can't have my morning, but just like at least showing up every morning and and you know whether that's just silence or meditation or reading or if you have like a whole regimented schedule that works for you, like. But being able to start off every day and have control over that fast of your life, because you never know what the day is going to throw at you. Very so um, starting there and then, uh, yeah, just having, um, I think, with with fitness, just, you know, getting active more days of the week than you're than than you're not. And then eating healthy, like having that mindset and that approach. And, you know, I'm not the person that's going to say, like, oh, eat for function. And that's, you know, yeah. there needs to be moderation. But um yeah just just not (laughs) yeah not not you know you need to I think as creatives we need to keep our instruments healthy like they're not going to serve us if we if we just eat crap all day and booze out or whatever you know so I think it's important to keep that balance yeah and that's very true especially since you know being in the pandemic and you know everybody's trying to get back into some kind of work life workforce kind of thing going on and in and, and home life right because a lot of us have spent a lot of our time at home and transitioning work to home and now we got to go back into work right and now we're fighting that and like no 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 and I'm like yeah okay I can stay home it's fine so developing that is key because you can really find yourself in a rut right and and I personally fell into that and I'm like no I have to get up and do something Right. And even if it's just walking or running or something, you're doing something. So saying that just do something and just show up. That's that's key. And that's mm-hmm. something that we try to to tell people. And I you know me from a healthcare perspective, I say you're not going to be 100 percent, 100 percent of the time. But if you show up and at least. One percent, two percent, it starts to climb, and then next thing you know, you are at that hundred percent. 
but yeah. you have to start by showing up. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's never been about perfection. It's, it's never going to be perfection. Like there, nobody is ever going to have a perfectly balanced life. I think it's, I think it's one of those things when you talk about living a balanced lifestyle, it's, I don't know, it's, I think it's reminding yourselves of areas where, I don't know, my parents did this whole chart where it was like, what are the roles? How do you show up in life? I think this was like Lou Tice, or I, I forget who it was, but it was like the roles that you show up in your life. And then it's like, okay, these are, these are how I show up to other people. And this is, this is who I am. This is who I identify as. And it's, it's being able to do something in those categories each week. So it's like, but even that, like you're not living a hundred percent balanced lifestyle. Like life is never going to allow you to do that. They're going to be great periods. Like you were talking about and ruts, like I'm going to be perfectly transparent this last month. Like I got out of the routine of my mornings and my nutrition. And that really rocked me like yes. mentally and physically for like a month. Yeah. And you know, now that I've been back into this for a good week or two and I'm starting to feel the momentum again, I feel great. I'm still not living a perfectly hundred percent balanced lifestyle, but I'm, I'm waking up every day and I'm making the commitment to do my best. And yes. I think that's what matters. And anybody who expects perfection from themselves, cause I'm the biggest, you know, <laughs> crook or what is it? Biggest, uh, You're your biggest critic, perpetrator. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, biggest critic. Yeah. Biggest, no person that, you know, getting out of that, but it's just, it's, it's not staying in that. It's just reminding yourself of what you're committed to and getting back to it. So, yeah. yeah. And that's that whole mindfulness piece. Mm. Right? Um, in the beginning of the season, this, this, yeah, this season, right. Um, I talk about being mindful and that is part of it. Just acknowledging mm -hmm. those periods where I'm not at my best, but I know that. So how do I get back to where I need to be? So it's not saying that you can never get there It's giving yourself, it's being kind to yourself. Yeah. Yeah. It's, um, and again, not trying to spoil any landmark things, but it's, it's getting out of the, the failure conversation and getting yes. back into what you're doing. Cause it's like, if you're just beating yourself up all day and saying you're a failure, like, what is that going to get you? It's going to make you feel bad. And guess what? You're not going to be in action because you're stuck in failure. And so yes. it's like acknowledging, like you're saying, mindfulness, transitioning, getting out of that and just continuing what you want to do. Yeah. yeah. Don't not, not moralizing it. Just go. <laughs> yeah. Cause it's not going to be perfect. Mm -hmm. And you can't compare your journey to someone else's journey because you don't walk the same way. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, again, went through that. It's, it's tough because I think naturally we play the comparison game. Oh, yeah. um, I think kind of like the, the conversation of failure, it's getting out of that comparison game, like teaching and tr teaching yourself to get out of that conversation quicker, like catch yourself like, Oh, nope, I'm doing it again. Time to get out of it. Like, I think the quicker we do that, the quicker it's like, it doesn't become the comparison game anymore. It's just your, your own journey where you're at, where you want to go. So. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So where is your journey taking you? Yeah. Um, I, I, you know, I've been, Recording I've asked myself, progress. um, a bunch of that myself too. And I think it's really been about, um, you know, figuring out what is not my end goal, but like if I could wake up every single day and do something, what would I want to do? Uh, and mm. for me, I, I think what that's been at least the past, I, I've talked to people about it and I, every time I've said it, it's felt more and more true. I would love to do um, voiceover and motion capture for video games. Oh. I think that would be like the combination of all my passions because I'd be on the stage like, you know, with the suits and the, and the facial recognition and the software and it would it's the acting side of things. So I'm getting that side and I'm also being able to go into the booth and do, you know, voiceover and that kind of stuff. I love it. And I've loved video games my entire life. I'm a huge <laughs> nerd. I love the story. I think it's super immersive. I can get caught for hours doing that. There's the moderation side of things. Uh, but yeah, like I love that. And if I could do that every single day, like I would be happy, you know, and I'm, I'm finding that for myself. And so that's, where I feel like my journey is going on the acting and the, the talent side. I ah, I, I think it's, it's a big question if I'm saying, Colin, what is your journey leading to? <laughs> <laughs> At least so the acting and performing side, absolutely. Would love to, would love to go that, that way. I'm considering taking on another um, like video game voiceover class here pretty soon, so I'm exploring that as well. Oh, at Grand so, Canyon? Yeah. Uh, not at Grand Canyon specifically, um, just uh, independent teachers. I'm still here in Seattle, um, 
I'm debating if I want to do uh, a one-on-one or if I want to do like more of a classroom setting. I'm thinking if I, because it's, you know, COVID and it's going to be online, I think I might just do one-on-one. I think if I was in there, like in the space with multiple people, I'd want to do a class, but I think just with where I'm at and I'm going to be recording from home kind of in this setup, you know, I'd rather just do on that one-on-one session. Gotcha. So, yeah. Yeah. That's, a, I mean, that's awesome. I'm, I'm totally in awe that that's where you want to go because you, you know, we never know where our journey takes us and, and that's maybe the goal right now, but you may start that and then veer off somewhere else. So, you know, you, you always start with a plan. I always say you start with a plan mm-hmm. and from there you just let it roll. Um, so I, I'm, I'm, I'm grateful for you sharing that. So where, all right, you're in Seattle right now. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, and we talked about your voiceover, where mm-hmm. you want to land that. All right. Now I know there's so many other pieces too, Colin. All right. <laughs> there's another piece in there. Yeah. All right. So how, when, okay. How and when do you branch yourself off? Cause we show up different ways depending on where we are. Right. Mm. So my question is how do you depict what Colin is shown that day? It's all mm. authentically you. Yeah. Ooh, that's good. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think it's definitely, I think part of it has to do with environment. Like who am I around that day or what am I doing? Uh, like when I'm by myself and I'm at home, you know, obviously I'm not talking up a storm or else I'd be a, a schizophrenic sociopath or something like that. So when I'm home, I think I'm not reserved. Like when I'm with my roommate, I think I'm, you know, I have more joy cause I'm able to bounce off people. Like I'm a huge extrovert. So being around people definitely helps. Like I'm going to a birthday party a little bit later today. So I'd probably be different around them than I am like with you sitting right here. So I think it definitely has to do with my environment, but I want to be the same person showing up in each environment. And I think that's, I think that's, it's tough when like you're in a room of professionals, when you're in a room with best friends, you know, it's just different how you show up. Mm -hmm. Um, And yeah. And then I'm also, I'm also a Christian. And so it's like, how do I show up in my, spiritual community or like how am I showing up the same and I think it's you know that that mindfulness side of things so I I try to be um you know consistent holding to my values you know what I uh you know what I identify with what I hold dear and try to show up every single time but um you know I don't know I I guess that's up to the people around me to to keep and that's why I have the people that can just tell you how it is it's like Colin you're not showing up like yeah like not like you're supposed to but you're you're not you right now so um, my parents, especially like when I was in that rut, like they knew it immediately. I was reserved. Um, I wasn't, I didn't sound like passionate. I was very like sentence to sentence, like very quiet. Mm-hmm. Um, so when I, when I'm definitely like out of my routines and I'm not, um, doing what I want to do, I show up very quiet, reserved, um, kind of break eye contact a lot instead of holding eye contact, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, I don't know. Is that is that kind of the answer that you were looking for? Yeah, or? absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Because, you know, it is a tough question. It really is. Yeah. Because we wear so many masks, I like to say, when we depending on where we show up and how we show up. And a lot of the um, conversations that I've had has been sh- around how people are showing up because of the pandemic. People mm-hmm. had, have had some time to be a little more reserved and a little more time to check in with themselves. So now when they show up, it's not the same person that was showing up pre pandemic because they've taken that time to evaluate themselves and make some changes. And sometimes those changes are not for the same group of people that you used to show up for. So now when you show up and you are presenting your authentic self, they see it as something different and that Mm -hmm. you're not being that. So that's why I I posed a question that way because, um, like I said, in the circles that I've been in, that's been a lot of the conversation. And I say, and, and, 
you know, just me being who I am. It's like, no, you can't say that. You don't know who that person is, what they've been through, what changes mm-hmm. they, they had to endure to be here today. So you can say that's not their authentic self. Maybe right now at this moment, it is. So um, I say that to share with the masses that we have to check in with not only ourselves, but with other people and the people that are in our circle because things are changing. Things are happening in their lives. And so when they present themselves, they're going to be different. So then it comes back to you as a person what's changed within you that you're not able to accept that and see that in that person right yeah so, so yeah she did answer the question in the roundabout way. <laughs> okay yeah okay cool just wanted, sorry. To, wanted to make sure I'm sorry. i, 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 I kind of went off on a but... tangent there but no <laughs> love it no that's good I, I think you know the fact that you went on a tangent shows that you're you know you're very passionate about that um I think looking at it too, I think there's, there's two ways. There's like the people that just look at somebody like, Oh, that person's changed. But then there are those people in your life who you've set up your, um, Oh, what's it like your foundation for success. And you're like, Hey, if like, you're seeing me like very, like, again, like be very honest with me. Like, Mm -hmm. am I showing up the way that like, I don't know, like it it keeps like my, I'm talking about my parents, like when they notice that I'm being reserved or whatnot, it's like, that isn't me. And that's not how I want to show up. And so the fact that they, they speak up and they say something and it gets me out of that place. Like, that's exactly what I want. Yes. I'd rather have them say that and just be like, oh, he's just on his own journey. But they know me so well and they know that they are my, you know, in a lot of ways, my, my pillar uh, there. Like, they, they do do that. And they check in with me and they, they bring me back. <laughs> they bring me back to who I want to be, like, who is Colin? And he is not a reserved, you know, no <laughs> zero communication sits in his room. Like that's, that's not who I am and that's not how I want to show up. So, right. Yeah. And I'm glad you said that because that's very important that, um, I'm a big component of people checking in on their friends and family, mm-hmm. um, because they're so, we're so quickly able to de- develop depression and slip into that and to just passively say, that's just how they are for the moment can also be like that could be their red flag to say hey check in ask me how I'm doing so I'm glad you mentioned that that they checked in on you and say hey yeah we don't like that (laughs) I don't want to see that (laughs) bring that other guy back bring my son (laughs) back to the table right Um, that's what we need because unfortunately I've had uh, a couple of friends who lost their adult children to suicide and they were suffering from depression and those things I wonder about those things because it's like okay did you check in right and and it's not to put blame on anyone at all never that but it's just kind of don't let that reservedness and that introvertness fall too deep you know even though we know who they are and how they usually show up, um, those minor changes can mean something. And to kind of check in. So your parents are amazing that they check in on you the way they they do. Um, Yes, they're incredible people. I won the freaking lottery for (laughs) who my parents are. Absolutely. (laughs) That is awesome. My kids get on my, they say I bother them too much because I check in way too much. It's like, hey, I just need to hear your voice at least once or twice a week. That's all I ask. No, hundred percent. Keep doing it. Keep doing it. They'll they'll thank you down the line. I promise. (laughs) (laughs) Right. It's like, I am an adult. I don't need to tell you when I'm getting on an airplane. Yes, you do. Sorry. Just tell me you're boarding. (laughs) Tell me you've landed. I I, I do want to know those things, Mm -hmm. you know, it's just those little things, but it means a lot. And it, and it, you know, it it just shows that connection that you have and, and, you know, and the value that it brings to you in your life. And then when you have children mm-hmm. <laughs> down yeah. the line somewhere, right? As scary of a thought that is, but yes, <laughs> oh, <come on. laughs> at least at this stage in my life. I don't know. I, I, I love it. I, seeing, you know, friends around me, sometimes it feels like people are speed running life. Oh, uh, yeah. Sometimes it's just like <laughs> married kid like it like again everybody's on their own journey it's just for me not to be in that place and just watching from the outside looking in I'm like guys just need to take a breath for a second I mean come on (laughs) 
Live a little bit. Not enough. Just a little yeah. bit. <laughs> I know. But, hey, again, journeys. Journeys, that's just, right? That's what I'm going to leave it at. <laughs> it's all journeys. <laughs> mm-hmm. No. Nope. So you have um, this wonderful project that you're doing. Please, mm-hmm. please, please share a little bit about that. I'd love to hear Yeah, it. so uh, the project that we uh, crowdfunded and are now going to production on uh, is called Used. It's a, a short on sex trafficking um, following a uh, 17-year-old girl. She's a protagonist who um, fell victim to sex trafficking. It's her journey of getting out of that life, um, getting out of that cycle of abuse, uh, not just in the life, but also she comes from uh, domestic abuse, physical abuse. Uh, and so getting out of those circles of abuse and starting that journey to healing. Um, cause I think we know, and you know, anybody who's knows about the, uh, sex trafficking just as a whole, it's like the, you know, the, the work doesn't stop when they get out of that, you know, that's just yes. the beginning of healing. It's the beginning of recovering from that trauma. Um, and you know, I'm a, the whole, I think of the theme and something like if, if I was just to wrap it up, like, what is the story about, um, it's that nobody is defined by their circumstances yes. and no matter what happens to you, nothing can change that. Uh, nothing can take away that value. And uh, yeah, y- you, your value is not diminished based on your circumstances. Yes. Uh, we raised over $13,000 uh, for the project um, about 11,500 after platform and crowdfunding fees and paying our team. Uh, we have about 11,500 going into the project. Nice. Uh, our second round of casting is happening this next weekend and hopefully shooting will happen in the next couple of weeks. So, uh, very, yeah, very excited. It's been an awesome process. You know, we, we crowdfunded and we raised the funds, uh, over a month and a half ago, there've been some complications, but again, you know, talking to what you were talking about earlier, flexibility, adaptability, you know, the, the project still has full head of steam and I'm just, uh, I'm very excited to to be down there in the space when we finally start shooting. So really looking forward to it. I'm excited for you. When I read and saw the project, when you sent it over to me, I'm like, yes, yes, and yes. <laughs> we need to shed light on that, on, on all f- facets of it, honestly. Yeah. Um, what brought you to want to highlight this? Yeah, it's a, it's a great question. Before I say that, though, thank you for supporting our project. Yes, okay, I'm, cool. I'm going to just pull it, put the shining light spotlight on you. Thank okay. you for contributing and wanting to make that happen. Very, very grateful. Um, You're welcome. Yeah, to answer your question. So we, uh, me and Jay, Jay, our co-producer on the project, uh, Jay Curtis, uh, we were talking about topics that we wanted to touch on. We threw a couple of ideas, uh, you know, back and forth, but something that kind of struck out to me and stuck out was sex trafficking. Mm -hmm. Uh, It was something that I've heard of. I wasn't really educated on it at the time, um, but it sounded like an interesting premise. Uh, From there, I remember my mom had mentioned that she knew somebody that uh, was involved in that world. I knew he was a police officer. uh, And he's like, oh, you're talking about Laura and Andy Connor. And so met with Andy, um, just a quick, you know, understanding of him. He runs Mm -hmm. this uh, Christian nonprofit, uh, 501c3, uh, called the Genesis Project, okay. and uh, they, um, you know, help people that are trying to get out of the life, uh, you know, to get out of those cycles of abuse, to start that journey to healing, um, and they provide a safe haven for them, as mm-hmm. well as kind of a springboard to get back into life, like a, you know, semblance of normal life, so yeah. housing, education, uh, if they choose, like, that, you know, that spiritual path, you know, finding Christ, like, they offer all of that, and they're not the type of group that's like, oh, you must, like, essentially, you know, leave here as a Christian. They're not, yes. they're not about that. Cause I don't think that is how you treat, you know, faith or religion at all, which is awesome that they don't put that, uh, that, is wonderful. Put that requirement or prerequisite. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the, they're an amazing group. So I got to talking to Andy, understanding the realities of sex trafficking. Um, we had a bunch of interviews uh, with him over the phone. This is during COVID season that we we're coming up with this idea. Mm-hmm. And, um, yeah, from there, he directed me to some articles, some documentaries touching on, you know, just it in Seattle, but also like nationwide. Like, what does that look like in other metropolitan areas, major cities? Like, mm-hmm. what, are, what are the realities there? Um, and then from there, that's when I just I knew that I wanted to create this short. That I had a big vision for it, what I wanted it to become, where I think it's going. And just have an amazing team uh, behind me that share this, that same vision. 
Um, so I'm, uh, I'm really excited to see it through. And I think we're going to make something super special and hopefully have the impact that we believe it's going to have. I so. think it's going to be a huge impact, huge. And the fact that you're also touching on domestic violence speaks volumes, um, to, it, to me, to just shedding light to it. Um, as a former victim of domestic violence, I appreciate it. Um, and also the fact that um, one of the things that I do on the podcast is during the month of October, I speak to domestic violence. I don't want to say victims because I don't, I don't like that word victim. Mm. They've been, you know, um, because I think we're victorious, victorious mm. individuals um, who... Uh, have lived with domestic violence um, and survived and survived and has built something huge, monumental in their lives. So I, I spend that time in October talking to them and sharing their stories, whoever wants to share their story, definitely. And um, I did it the first year, last year, first year for everything, right? <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> last year, awesome. um, but we're carrying over again this year to have a. Uh, I'm partnering with someone else, and we're doing a kickball event in Scottsdale. That's um, is part of that. So maybe we'll share some information about that, and you can come down and maybe share, sit, have a table of your own talking about used because that yeah. is that is speaks to what we're doing and shedding mm -hmm. light on domestic violence. Um, so that I appreciate you. And I, that, and I think that's one of the biggest reasons why I said I had to be some sort of supporter to this project um, because yeah. of the fact that not only for the human trafficking and the patients that I've taken care of who were victims of human trafficking, but also the domestic violence piece. So definitely... Um, appreciate that and appreciate you doing your homework. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's definitely uh, I think that was one of my, my big things. Like, obviously we, you know, I think this is something too, like through crowdfunding and, and talking to people that have experienced domestic abuse and sex trafficking. And also how so often we can see that domestic abuse leads to that life and trafficking. Mm -hmm. I never want to assume that that is the story. Because like we're talking about the journey, there's so many stories of how people um, have gotten into that life and have experienced that on both sides with sex trafficking and domestic abuse. So, mm -hmm. you know, I think it's it's tough writing a story like this because I'm not sure everybody is going to, to see what they experience. And I, I never want to say that um, there is a single story to that. Like right. there isn't, there will never be one encapsulating story that's going to, everybody can relate to personally. Um and obviously for people, I don't want them to be, you know, re-victimized by watching this as well. So we want to be very transparent about what we're creating here mm -hmm. so people aren't triggered by that, aren't re-victimized through watching it. So Absolutely. I want to make that clear. But yeah, at, at the heart of it, like, this is a story that really struck me. It, it came from, it's not just one story about somebody that I'm taking, but it's the amalgamation of different stories and different testimonies that I've seen, you know, put together in, in one um, narrative that I feel speaks to a variety of different issues. And that, that is realistic. Like this isn't something that's, this isn't Hollywood. This right. isn't taken. This isn't blown up for the sake of drama. Like I, I truly feel like down to earth, like this is a story that, um, that touches on the realities and what that really looks like. So that was my priority, especially in giving an authentic world, um, to this, like not again, not doing it for the sake of drama or wow factor. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, hopefully that comes through for a lot of people. But I know you can't, can't please everybody, but no, that's can't. not going to stop me from trying. <laughs> that's right. And, and and that's just, you know, who we are as creatives, right? Mm -hmm. you, you just want to put your best forward and be liked by everybody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when I say I, I'm not going to stop trying, not going to sacrifice the quality of project to please everybody, but, you know. You go to put I'd your like best. for people to be touch moved and inspired. Absolutely. That's, that's always my goal. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And the fact that you are, you know, not that age matters. I like that you are at the age to recognize the traumas of the world. Right. And that yeah. you're able to speak on it from your perspective. 
And it, because it does affect us all, all ages, all sexes, it doesn't matter. Um, once upon a time, individuals thought sex trafficking was just all women and, mm. and kids, and it's not. It's yeah. not. It's men as well, and the same with domestic violence. Domestic violence happens to men as well. And um, unfortunately, not a lot of men share that story, and you know, out of pride and you know, retaliation and all those things. But uh, we want to start to hear more about it and shedding light on it, which is why I'm grateful for the movie, the short, which we, we're going to manifest, right? We're going to manifest yeah. it into a feature so that the world can see it. And it's not yeah. just shown in our creative world. Right, because I really think that something of this magnitude needs to be out for the masses to see, not just for us creatives. Not that it's not no. great. I mean, I, I totally find that it's amazing for us as creatives, but th you're doing something that's world worthy and needs mm -hmm. to be out there in the world for all to see. So, um, I'm going to manifest you. that for you. <laughs> <laughs> I'll join in with you. With that. Join in on that. that manifestation and, yeah. you know, and add that to the, to the list of things. So yeah, I, I think that is amazing. And just think the, that this is what we, unfortunately, this is the, the world we live in. Right. Yeah. Um, and it can happen in any part of the world. It's not locate in just one location and that's what we try to share with people say oh they live in that part of the world so that happens over there it happens in these countries no it's all over it's mm -hmm. all over it's in your backyard for some of us yeah and, i think it's um oops sorry didn't mean no, to you're fine. Off there. Mm -mm. yeah i think it's um oh, and again not speaking for everyone here because i can't but i think for a lot of people it's something they don't really want to look at yeah um Right. It is a very messy thing and, or that they, they aren't, um, they either haven't sought the education or they haven't witnessed like any education in that area. So they're, they're speaking from a place of ignorance or misinformation right. or whatnot. And, you know, there are a lot of different obstacles to, to seeing something like this and understanding the gravity of how much of an impact that uh, this is. I, I forget the specific statistics, but you know, hundreds of millions, if not more, mm -hmm. you know, I, I think we we're, when Jay and I were talking with people, like we, we were um, chatting, chatting with like statisticians, people that also own their, their own, you know, 501c3 nonprofits with sex trafficking. And they're talking about their own statistics for, um, you know, so even during the COVID season, how like rates increased during the COVID season. Yes. And it's like, uh, it's just so nonsensical, but that's, again, like you're saying, that's the reality we live in. Um, so uh, yeah, understanding that and being able to see it for what it is. I think that's very important. Yeah, yeah. So edutainment is what you're providing right now. Ooh, I like that phrase. You, you patent that one? I can I, can I, I? <laughs> edutainment. I will share that. You are, can definitely use that. Edutainment. Uh, edutainment, like right? We're educating through edu through entertainment um, is, oh. is the goal. So, yeah. you know, kudos to you for that because that is never easy. <laughs> Thank you. Never easy, but um, yeah. I'm glad you took on the challenge, and I'm definitely glad to be a part of the challenge. And as I said, anything that I can do to lend a hand, just let me know. I am more than happy. Yeah, yeah creatives yeah. supporting creatives. That's Absolutely, what it's all about. That's what it's all about. Um, so yeah, so I'm I'm gonna we're gonna lighten it up just a little bit um, okay. because that was really heavy. <laughs> <laughs> Get all us and all of our, our listeners can just take one collective breath. And yes, then... just a nice deep breath in and that. let it all out. Right? All right. Because it's lighter stuff. I light, like it. Lighter stuff. <laughs> lighter stuff. I don't know how light is gonna be, but it's lighter. It's lighter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um so you do all these things, right? You got mm -hmm. all these wonderful blessings that are happening to you. What about your love life? Yes, love life. Uh, <laughs> I have a beautiful girlfriend, Rebecca. She is down in Phoenix right now. We're we're navigating long distance, uh, but you know we're we're taking on the challenge. I think that she's she's worth it, and we've been uh, navigating that for past 
Oh man, a couple, uh, yeah, since, I mean, she graduated in, in December. So yeah, we've been, you know, essentially all of 2021 here, been navigating that together, but, uh, or no, she graduated in spring. I graduated in December. Yeah. Yeah. That's what we did. Sorry. <laughs> Crazy. But uh, yeah, like, you know, I, I got to, I went down there for a weekend uh, a couple of weeks ago and you know, I'm going to be down there again for production. going to stay with her. So it's, uh, you know, it's difficult. I'm never going to, I'm the first one to say that distance sucks and it's not easy. And it takes two people who are, are willing to be open and honest and just communicate their needs and um, just navigate with each other from there because it's, it's never an ideal situation. Distance has never been an ideal situation, but it takes the right people. And I, I think we've been, we've been very present and very patient with each other. And, uh, yeah, um, yeah, she's she's awesome. I love her so. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. So, how do you navigate the communication piece? You talked about having that great communication. How does that work? How does that look for you guys? Yeah, uh, I think just being intentional about chatting with each other. She's great at that. I can get so, so caught up in my world, so I will say straight up, like she is way better at me when it comes to being intentional about you know uh, calling. Like I'm. I, you know, I'm so, I don't know. I'm not want to say I'm efficient. What's the word? Like I, if you know personality types at all, like, uh, with like Myers-Briggs, like yes. I'm an ENFJ, like I'm very planned, efficient, you know, checking boxes. That's who I am. She's an ENFP. And so she likes to, she's very spontaneous in the moment type person. And so, uh, it's like, I'll be in the middle of like training with the client and I'll get a call from Rebecca. And I'm like, Oh, I can't pick up right now. So I'll text her like, Hey, I'll call you in a bit. And so, you know, navigating that um, and communicating, I think it's just kind of bare bones what I was going back to. It's needs, where are you at, um, but also being very intentional, having an intentional spirit of, you know, this is the person I love, this is who I want to talk to, and even when it's not the most, I mean, like, uh, opportune moment or ideal circumstances, like, still doing it anyway and making the time. Yeah. Um, I think that's very important, and it's it's something that we can all get better at. I'm not a pro at it. Uh, no, I need I need reminders too. If she yeah. if she's feeling like I'm a little bit distant, you know, we have we've set up the you know a structure for fulfillment for each of us to be able to have that open space and communicate. Like, hey, I don't feel like I'm being heard, or I don't feel like I'm being listened to. Like, awesome. can you please like hop on the phone with me? Can we talk about this? Like, and that's important. That's what yes. some people just bottle it up, and it's just like oh, relationship sucks. My SO isn't even talking to me. What is this? And it's like, well, have you told them that? It's like, well, no, but it sucks still. It's like, yeah, Yeah. you should probably speak your mind. And so we've created that, that space to speak our minds there. So I think that's very important. Yeah, that that's awesome. And you're also setting yourself up for, um, again, sorry, don't mean to project, but if uh, a marriage in the future, right? Um, a successful marriage because it takes that constant work and constant communication because it's not going to be perfect all the time, Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And recognizing that early on is going to set you guys up for an amazing 50, 100 year marriage, right? (laughs) Because you're going to be constantly checking in with each other and communicating. So I think that is amazing. And then just to back up a little bit, for those of you who don't know what the Myers-Briggs personality test is, it's it's, it's a wonderful personality test that's online and um, it breaks down who you are pretty much in a nutshell Mm -hmm. and how you operate on your day-to-day life. And um, if you haven't taken it, um, I would suggest it's probably something to kind of just check in to see about who you are, right? Um, I recently just redid it. Uh, so, and, and of course, it always comes back. I'm a mediator. Yes, I know that. <laughs> I know that. Love it. <laughs> Can you tell me something I don't know? <laughs> um, so, and I keep forgetting the letters. I think I, I'm a I, INPF. G or something like that. My daughter is like amazing at that. Is it INFP? INFP. There it is. INFP. I love it. Um, and she, my, our daughter just loves it. And she's like, mom, you need to do this. I did this like 10 years ago. Do I have to do it again? (laughs) So yeah. So it's definitely one of those things that you just want to do, especially when you're in a relationship. Um, I think it's really good for you both to do it. Um, what about your love language? What's your love yeah, language? Yeah, um, 
Yeah, so for me, it's uh, words of affirmation and quality time. Uh, those mm-hmm. are big for me. Uh, it's it's tough because I'm I definitely think quality time is even brought up when I'm in like you know just being an extrovert like I, when I'm with the person and in that space I think that's definitely brought up but you know just I think I've found that you know being able to I don't think compromise is the word but to be intentional about quality time whatever that looks like whether that's a phone call or whether that's a Zoom or a FaceTime mm-hmm. just being present and not letting distractions around you take away from that but just being present with the person I think that's really important. It's something I need to get better at for sure, because I can tend to get pulled off every which way, but, you know, wanting to make that space for people, 100%. Right. As most of us creatives do, when we get busy and we get into um, a project, Mm -hmm. we get laser focused and it's like, okay, we have a deadline. This is what we need to do. And then all outside peripheral vision is gone. (laughs) It's total tunnel vision. So yeah, I can totally see that. Um, There's a, do you know that they have a, uh, that they have a love language nudge app? I did not. Tell me about that. So my husband and I, actually, he found it and he had me download it um, because, you know, like you said, you try to keep that constant communication open. Um, So uh, he had me download it. So it's an app that you can program your love language. You take the test all over again and it puts your love language in and it tells you can send a nudge to your significant other on how, how you're feeling that day. Are you at a hundred percent or are you at 50% and what can you do to, to get to that point? Right? Interesting. And then it also has a list of things that you can do related to your significant other's love language. So if it's words of affirmation and you know you're very you know you're bad at sending notes of I love you, how are you doing today? It gives you a nudge to say, did you send a message? Hmm. Did you give a hug? Those kinds of things. No. And I thought it was great for me because of the simple fact I have right now about 10 projects that hmm. are on my plate. Wow. Um, and that's not even an exaggeration, uh, but I can get lost. I get lost really easy and I'm a workaholic at that. Hmm. So it does not take much for me to get lost at a task. So sure. I'm really grateful that he had, a, had, had us put that on there because it hmm. does make me aware. Um, we have lost sight of it for a little while because we both got busy so now we are just re, like, hey, we got to, we, you know, you're going to be in like Sholo and I'm going to be here. So now we really have to be intentional about communicating back and forth. Similar to, you know, you being in Seattle and Phoenix, right? Yeah. Um, and marriage doesn't change that between being boyfriend and girlfriend. It's the same work. That's why I said yeah. you're setting yourself up well for yeah. a successful marriage and I, I commend you both for for taking that journey um don't know Rebecca I, I hope to meet her at the wedding one day um <laughs> <laughs> oh, before yeah, the I mean, wedding before the wedding <laughs> yeah with, with any of the the projects down there I know she's in still in the communication with Jay so I know he has a, a lot of projects he wants to get written as well so uh, yeah, but if you're ever in the, I think the 20 for 20 chats, uh, I think she's, I think she's in one of that. Rebecca Hender. Is oh, is she name, in the 20 for out, 20 so. chats? I've been kind of lost in the 20 for 20 chats. I had to check in with Jay. I haven't been in too many. As I said, I've had 10 projects that I'm, I'm working on. Yeah. And, um, yeah. so I have to really get back on. Hey, there's that mindfulness that, thing, though. right? Yeah, no, no, no failure chat. No, oh, no. should have, would have, just boom, do no, it. <laughs> just got to get back on it, right? So, yeah. and that's what it is. It's like, okay, I know what I need to do. Let's do it. Let's just do right. it. Like my running, I hate doing it, but I have to get up and do it. <laughs> I, I commit myself to at least twice a week, yep. whenever that is, whenever it yeah. is, right? Love it. So. Yeah, so I don't want to keep you too much longer because I can definitely continue. <laughs> That's just me. Um, I love talking to good people. I love the energy. So, you know, I you know I don't want to keep you that much longer, um, especially I am I think you're just getting off of work and trying to <laughs> get settled. Yeah, it's, it's, been an interest, it's been an interesting Sunday. It's a good one. Good one. Don't, don't get me wrong. It's just uh, every day has its things. But I'm, I'm glad we've, we've made the space and we... 
yeah, took the time to check because this this is important to me and it gets my creative life moving and and like the I don't know just the the energy like you're talking about the energy and that that desire to to continue to do what you love. So yeah. I, I love making time for space like this. Yeah, I, I love space it. for time like. This. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I love. I know, right? Um, after a while, you know, your verbiage goes. Uh, am I saying that right? Am I? Yeah. And yeah, we'll leave that to everybody else listening. If you uh, don't like how I talk, right. uh, feel free to send me a message. You Absolutely. know, we can we can chat all the way and it'll be it'll be a wonderful time. Hit me up. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. So once your your project is complete, I will definitely love more information on how I can put it out there because um yeah. what we'll do is once you're you're at the final stages and you're ready to promote and get it out there, we can definitely come back and have a whole another section for um the completed project and where it was and where where it's taking you in that journey so definitely keep that on your radar and we're going to constantly be talking back and forth anyway so i'm not (laughs) worried about that so i just want to say thank you thank you to everyone that um is listening that you've taken the time out to share and i hope that something that was said today resonates with someone um, I, we said a lot of amazing things, um, and I'm not just saying that because we're amazing people. But <laughs> can't help it. <laughs> we, I mean, we just did. We 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 can we can solve the world's problems. I think, you know, if yeah. they just ask Love us, it. right? Yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. <laughs> Maybe have a Q and A session or something. We'll take on all the big topics. <laughs> Absolutely, we could do that. Um, <laughs> But again, thank you, thank you, thank you, really, from the bottom of my heart. I truly appreciate you, your time that you've taken with me today. And any other day, even when it's a call to just say, hey, I'm just checking in. How you doing? You don't know how much I appreciate that. I appreciate it immensely, um, those check-ins, because that means you yeah. thought of me and you took the time out to reach out, and I appreciate that. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you so much for having me. Seriously, again, I, I'll just say it again, like, being on on these podcasts and and especially like being with other creatives like yourself like it just it it gives into my life as much as it i hope it's giving into yours so thank you for having me on absolutely um so if someone wants to get a hold of you how do they find you yeah so uh i think the probably the best way if you want to see what i've done you know keep up with me uh instagram uh is a great one at colin m fisher that's c o l l i n m as in mike Fisher, F-I-S-C-H-E-R, uh, or on Facebook at Colin Fisher Axe, same spelling. Uh, and feel free to throw me a DM uh, if you're interested in any of my work, be it acting and voiceover. Would, uh, would love to get, or screenwriting. You know, I love writing, too. Oh, thank you. Uh, let's get in touch, and uh, let's explore the possibilities. Oh, you didn't tell me about the screenwriting. You can write my life. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on. Made this project. We're talking about that today. Yeah, yeah I can absolutely. Write, I can write about my life. No. <laughs> No, thank you so much. I truly appreciate you and your time. Yeah, absolutely. Wow, what an amazing conversation I have with Colin. Colin, again, I can't stress enough. Thank you so much for taking the time to be a part of the podcast and sharing your thoughts on just not uh, yourself, but also maintaining your sense of self and all the great projects and things that you're doing. Um, So if by chance, anyone loves or enjoys or wants to share a part of what we've talked about today, please do. Um, As I said, we talked about some really great things about health and wellness, mindfulness, and just being your authentic self. Um, Share with someone who needs may need to hear something of encouragement. And also, please share your feedback with me. Uh, I've heard a lot from a lot of people, but um, I would love to hear from more. So if any of you would like to share some information with me, please feel free. You can reach me at www.thesofaeclectic.com and subscribe to the page. Or you can definitely send me an email at dc at com, And you can reach me on Facebook, DC Soulful Eclectic or Instagram, the.soulfuleclectic. If you have any questions, just feel free. If there's a topic you would love to hear about, definitely share with me. I would love to hear from you. And as always, please check in on your friends and family 
for. We never know what struggles they may be going through. Thank you, and I look forward to hearing from each and every one of you. Thank you.